Welcome to Power Your Story Podcast, a podcast produced by high school students in Chicago with the support of After School Matters and the Creative Imposter Studios. This is Miko. Welcome to Power Your Story Podcast, and today we'll be going through some very interesting Reddit stories. First story is called, Am I the a- for using flashcards to explain to my brother and his wife why they can't bring their rainbow baby to my wedding? My fiance, F, and I, M, are getting married. We've decided wedding's going to be child-free. No hate towards children, just want to keep it more organized and contained. My brother, Chris, and his wife, F, have a three-year-old son who everyone calls Miracle or Rainbow Baby. He came after several failed pregnancies that lasted for years. When they found out that my nephew was included in the no children rule, they tried to convince me to make an exception for him. Chris told me his son is a miracle baby and his presence at the wedding will bring blessings for me and my fiance. Jeez. I refused and said, no, the wedding is child free. His wife kept sending my fiance pics of my nephew when he was a few months old, whatever that means. I told them no and to stop. My brother told me this might cause a rift in our relationship. I again said no and explained that the wedding is child-free. He asked again and pointed out how his baby is different since he's a rainbow baby and a miracle baby. I again said no and explained that the wedding is child-free. They brought it up when they visited my home and I knew they weren't going to stop, so I made flashcards in advance with the phrase, the wedding is child-free, period, and pulled them out and started slowly showing them the flashcards one by one in this order. The wedding, with a sticker of bride and groom, is child, with a sticker of a baby, free, with a sticker of a no sign, and a period, with a huge black dot sticker. They both were stunned. I asked if they get it now, and Chris lost his... His wife had already grabbed her stuff and walked out. Chris called me an asshole for doing this and said that I disrespected him, his wife, and their son, who's my one and only nephew. He rushed out after we argued. My fiancé saw the whole thing and thought that it was funny, but they're telling everybody about the amount of disrespect and mockery I had displayed towards them, and I'm being told to fix it now. Am I the asshole? Whoa, my god. Okay, this is definitely a not- situation and I personally would be so annoyed if someone did this when I'm trying to plan my wedding like I told you the wedding is child free I don't care what miracle you think your child is I said no okay it's not much of a miracle when you have a screaming three-year-old running around and not to mention like imagine the kind of like imagine if fiance's family would be so upset because their children couldn't come but they made an exception for this one kid because he's a miracle baby that's not even a good excuse so absolutely not soul op that g okay my next story is am i the asshole for not helping my sister with her wedding because i'm not in the bridal party my sister and i aren't best friends but we have a pretty good relationship good enough that when she got engaged i assumed that i would either be maid of honor or at least a bridesmaid she ended up not asking me despite having a bridal party of 10 but i didn't say anything though i was a little hurt i totally get that it's her wedding and i'm not entitled to be in her wedding party and eventually got over it a little afterwards my best friend got engaged and asked me to be the maid of honor and i happily dived into the responsibility and spent a lot of fun for the both of us i've already been able to plan and execute a lot that has been made the experience fun for my friend, and has also been a lot less stressful for her. On to the issue. My sister's maid of honor honestly dropped the ball. I know I'm going to be biased, but I've received complaints from family members and other friends. She hasn't put any effort into helping my sister with her wedding, didn't plan anything, never responds to my sister's messages, and just generally isn't interested at all. None of my sister's other bridesmaids are stepping up either. They all have a reason for why they can't spend more time at my sister's wedding. My sister recently approached me to plan everything for her, bridal shower, bachelorette, and the actual wedding. She wants me to give her the same experience I've given my friend. I was a little offended because she only asked after she saw what a great job I did for someone else. But she's my sister, so I told her I'd be willing to help if she made me a bridesmaid. I feel like it's the least she could do, and it would make me feel less like an errand girl and part of the actual wedding. She refused and said that I'd make the numbers off and that I didn't have the look she was trying to accomplish, which really offended me. Like, at this point, I'm just mad. 
So I said, fine, I don't have to be part of the wedding, but then she needs to hire me as a wedding planner because I'm not doing this for free. It takes a huge time commitment to do all of the work. She went crying to mom and dad now, and they all are calling me an asshole because I should do it as a sister, but she's basically asking me to do hours of work for free, which I feel like isn't fair. Now, my family is saying that I'm ruining her special day by being selfish and making it all about me. So I'm starting to doubt myself. Am I the asshole? I think personally, this is another not the asshole story. I feel like this poor woman has a very entitled sister and her sister is probably the golden child and mommy and daddy want to do everything for their special little girl's big day. And honestly, like this is just an overall like bogus request. Like as a sister, she should do all this work for free with while not even being in part of the actual wedding. Like if I'm going to be doing all this work as your maid of honor, then I want the title that comes with it, not do all this for free just so that I can have my perfect day and not get any recognition for it. Like that's not happening. Honestly, this sounds like your sister is just an entitled brat and is being a bit of a bridezilla and she needs to back off and maybe hire an actual wedding planner and boot her maid of honor because her maid of honor clearly does like either has other commitments that she didn't care enough to tell the sister about or just does not care about the sister like as much as the sister thought she did. So honestly, maybe this is just karma, but whew, not the asshole OP. Not the pull. Ooh. Okay. So this is another story that I didn't read, but I thought looked interesting. Am I the asshole for asking my husband to join us in my sister's birthday since he was in the same restaurant? I, female 26, was invited to my sister's, female 18th, birthday a few days ago at a restaurant. My husband didn't come because he said he had a meeting dinner with some clients. This made my family feel let down, especially my sister who wanted him there and also her 18th birthday was a big deal to her, obviously. To my surprise, when I arrived, I noticed that my husband was having this meeting at the same place. His table was right in the corner and he had about four men sitting with him. My parents and the guests saw him as well. I waved for him and he saw me but ignored me. He obviously was as much a surprise as I was. My parents asked why he didn't even come to the table to acknowledge them after the cake arrived. I got up and walked up to his table. I stood there and said, excuse me, my husband was silent when I asked after I introduced myself to the clients if he'd take a few minutes to join me and the family in candle blowing and say happy birthday, but he barely let out a phrase and said, I don't think so. I'm busy right now. I insisted saying it'd just take a couple of minutes and that it means so much to my sister. He stared at me then stared off quickly back at his clients they said nothing and he got up after my parents were motioning for me to hurry up he sat with us while my sister blew out the candles and cut the cake my parents insisted he take a piece and join us in the selfie but he got up and walked back to his table looking pissed we haven't talked till we met later at home he was upset and started scolding me in front of my parents saying i embarrassed him and made him look unprofessional and ruined his business meeting i told him he overreacted since it only took a few minutes and it was my sister's birthday and my family wanted him to join since he was literally in the same restaurant he called me ignorant and accused me of tampering with his work but i responded that ignoring mine and my family's presence was unacceptable we argued then he started stonewalling me and refusing to talk to me at all FYI, I didn't see an issue with him missing the event, but after seeing that he was already there, then it became a different story. Also, it literally took five to seven minutes. He didn't even eat or drink, just sat down and watched. Wow, OP, that is, um, the ignorance is amazing. I, I don't even know. How can you not realize that this was clearly an important thing for your husband? Absolutely, you are the asshole, OP. This is monumental levels of polary in my opinion because he literally told you he was going to be at a business meeting talking with clients and you decided to interrupt his meeting to tell him to come blow up candles with your sister your 18 year old sister this could have cost him like these clients and that could have been really detrimental to his job and you decided that it wasn't a big deal because he was in the same restaurant and it was your sister's birthday why is your sister more important than his job like it doesn't matter if you're in the same restaurant. What if he was in the next restaurant over? Like, would you have gone in there and told him to come to the next door to blow out your sister's candles as well? Why does your husband need to be there? Like, he said he was busy. Absolute, you are the asshole. I cannot believe you. Uh, ooh, okay. This is interesting. Am I the asshole? for pretending not to know my fiance after she had a meltdown during boarding the plane and was eventually thrown off. 
I imagine I'm going to get raked over the coals for this one. So my fiance, but maybe not for much longer, and I were on our way back from a vacation recently. It was a great time and everyone went off without an issue. That is, until we started boarding the plane. Now, I know better. I only bring a small backpack with essentials in case I don't get my checked bags. I can survive out of this backpack, and it will always baggage check for size and weight. Done a lot of traveling, so why fight the system? My fiancé didn't want to listen to my advice and chose to bring basically a regular full-size bag that barely fits the standards of carry-on. But generally speaking, the airline worker doesn't want to deal with the trouble and allows it through. But this time, the airline worker was not having it. It was a packed flight. We were boarding last in economy, and it was just a show. I got through just fine with my little backpack, but I could hear the argument from the boarding tunnel thing, and it was getting heated. I was about to go back and try to smooth it out, but my fiancé rushed past and just boarded the plane. I assumed, not having heard it super clearly, that the attendant had given her in and let her on. That was not the case. So we found our seats and settled in. I was pretty tired and I could tell she was upset. So I just kind of tucked into the window and put my hat down and tried to take a nap. But soon after, the airline worker and a cop shows up and they are not messing around and want her off the plane. She tries to plead and cry, etc. But they are not having it. And maybe in a moment of panic or just plain self-preservation, the cop asks if we together. But I blurt out, no, shaking my head emphatically. I got killer dagger eyes from her as she shot up and grabbed her bag and followed the cop out. She was also swearing and screaming the whole way out. Now, obviously, this is well after the event I'm posting this, but when she did eventually get home, she caught next flight with the bag checked. I was there to pick her up. She obviously thought I was the asshole, and to be honest, almost everyone I know thinks I'm an asshole except my boss and coworkers, who, for context, were very much relying on me to be back on time, which I gave my word I would for a really important project that was time sensitive. They were all very happy I didn't get thrown off too, so am I the asshole for this self-preservation? Honestly, I don't think so. She decided to throw a fit because an airline worker was just doing their job and acted a bit like a Karen. And so we don't like Karens much here. So honestly, I think not so. I think you did what you had to do to make sure that you didn't get thrown off of your flight. And if she didn't want to get thrown off the flight too, she shouldn't have been acting like an asshole. And she shouldn't have tried to rush onto the plane and think that it would all be okay. And when she went against the airline workers like words i think maybe she should just not do that like she should try to be patient with people who are just trying to do their jobs oh boy she sounds like a handful bro get out while you can because i don't think it's gonna get much better all right last story am i the asshole for telling my sister to either lay off my parenting style or to leave my house slash go homeless I, 44 male, am a single father to a 14-year-old daughter. I have raised her on my own since her mother passed away 10 years ago. Since the beginning, I was not a fan of being a strict father. I came from a household like that, and all it did was give me a miserable childhood and a strained relationship with my parents and a crap ton of therapy. Two weeks ago, my sister's house got flooded. They found out that the foundation rotted. I offered them to move into my finished basement with separate entrance, house built on a hill. So right now, her husband, her three sons, 16, 13, and 9, and her are living in my three-bedroom basement. It has a full bathroom and a kitchen slash living room. Usually, they have their life, and we have ours, but we hang out for a couple hours every day, and that's when the trouble started. Like I said, I don't have too many rules for my daughter. As long as I know where she is and she's back by 9 p.m., she's free to go wherever she wants, within limits, of course. I do not control what she wears or what makeup she puts on, as long as she follows her school's dress code. And, of course, she dresses appropriately for special occasions. She does not have a bedtime. I do not check if she did her homework. She has a lock on her door, and I always ask permission before going in. If she does not like what I plan to make for a meal, she is free to cook something else or order takeout, as long as she informs me before I start cooking and no ordering in more than twice a week. Also, she uses her money to order in. Now, these rules are a result of me having a good kid, her earning my trust, and me wanting her to grow up as independent as possible while learning to self-regulate and keeping her safety in mind. Sounds like a good dad right there. Very good. Very good, OP. I applaud you. Claps for OP. My sister, on the other hand, is very strict. Oh, no. 
she has her kids on a set routine. They're not allowed to have closed doors except while changing. She checks their electronics all the time. They are rarely allowed to go anywhere. They eat what she cooked or they starve if she allows them not to eat what she made, that is. She is so on top of their schooling that I feel bad for the teachers. She always is emailing them or calling them or even going to the school to bother them. Oh, God. They do not get pocket money and are not allowed to work. And even the 16-year-old has a 9 p.m. bedtime, school nights, and 10 p.m. weekends. I don't agree with her parenting style, but I keep my opinions to myself. But now she is demanding that I give my daughter more rules because her kids are comparing themselves to their cousin and they are rebelling. I mean, they were going to rebel anyway. You're not letting your kids work. You don't want them to be independent. So I told her straight to her face. She either keeps her opinions to herself and parents her kids and leave my daughter to me or she is free to find somewhere else to live. She says I'm an asshole because I don't know how my lax parenting is only adding more stress to her already stressful life and threatening her with homelessness is a very low blow. Edit, forgot to add, what started this whole thing in this situation, my sister and her family know that they're not supposed to go to the second floor without permission. That's where my and my daughter's bedrooms are. Well, my nephew started using this rule to hang out with their cousin without their mother being able to get to them. And when she does, my daughter's door is usually locked, so she has to wait for them to open it for her. She is convinced that they're hiding something from her in my daughter's room. All they are doing is having some freedom and privacy away from her constant monitoring. Am I the asshole? Oh, your sister sounds like a piece of work. Honestly, she sounds like the kind of parent who, sort of like your parents, she's going to drive her kids away. The thing that really gets me is the fact that she doesn't let her 16-year-old son work. Like, he's not allowed to have his own money, which is completely, like, insane. Because having, like, job experience is really good for teenagers because when they get to college, having job experience could help them do better in college. Also, if they're working now, he can save up for college. So it literally sounds like she just wants to control every aspect of her child's life for as long as they live, which is insane. So not solo P. Uh, honestly, good on your daughter for giving her cousins a safe space for them to go. It sounds like she's a really great person. You raise a good kid. You sound like a good man. And your sister sounds nuts. She sounds like the kind of person who her kids are never going to speak to after they move out eventually. All right. That's all for now. Thank you, everyone, for watching or listening. Or Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go. I have things to do, people to see. And I hope everyone has a great day and deals accordingly with the in their life. Goodbye, everybody. Power Your Story Podcast is produced by high school students in Chicago at the Creative Imposter Studios. With the production support from After School Matters. Listen to more Power Your Story in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite listening app. If you love what you heard, you can write a review in Apple Podcasts or share this episode with friends and family. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at Power Your Story Podcast. Get links and learn more in the show notes and at PowerYourStoryPodcast.com. Thank you for listening. And have an amazing day.